All right, let's uh, let's see what Nintendo's been up to lately. Oh, a new Kirby game. Well, it is a Breath of the Wild too, but <laughs> let's see. Oh my god, it's so cute. It's dessert themed. I can't stop. All right, this is the most replayed moment. Let me just see what all the fuss is about. In that moment, Diana knew the weight of the task ahead of her, but willingly walked into the fire, knowing it was the right thing to do. Hello everyone, and welcome back to procrastinating all of your other tasks by watching crafting videos online. This week we are sculpting the fattest, thickest iteration of Kirby I've ever seen from the new game, Kirby's Dream Buffet. Before we start on the sentient ball of mochi we all know as Kirby, I'm going to momentarily work on the base by tracing out and then cutting two rough circles from some XPS foam. Now they look a little bit rough as of now, but take my word for it, these will eventually turn into a doll of debatably poisonous whipped cream. But for now, I kind of have the hankering to work on Kirby instead, so let's do that. Basically, 99% of his body will be from the aluminum ball I made, and I give it an even coating of clay, trying to get it as smooth as I can before baking it. And despairing over how lumpy it is. Kirby is probably the smoothest thing out there next to my brain, so I give it a super good sand before I move on to add his arms and legs. His arms and legs, if you could truly call them that, will require minimal effort. All I'm doing is rolling out some clay so I can cut four equal parts, forming them into a circle and pressing them onto the body with some bacon bond. And with his arms and legs attached, really the only other pieces to add are his eyes and his mouth. For his eyes, I'm rolling out two Tic Tacs and pressing them down lightly, and for his mouth, I pre-baked a thin roll of clay into the shape of a smile. Now he is looking absolutely delectable, but the Kirby in the game was sitting on top of a scale, so I'm going to attach the top of the scale right onto Kirby's butt. I'm using the lid from some Mod Podge I had to cut out a nice circle, and then using some Bacon Bond to secure it in place. So that will be the metal part of the scale, and right under it you can actually see that there's a pink cross that attaches the metal to the rest of the scale. So I rolled out a rough cross shape, and I'm just cleaning it up with an X-Acto knife after I've attached it with some bacon bond. After its addition, get it? because it, it looks like a plus sign. We can shift our focus back to the base again, just for a little bit. We're gonna glue the two levels of foam together with some super glue that's, <clears throat> that's, a, that's incredibly easy to open, given my super strength, and carefully pour some out onto the bottom layer. Once they were secure, I noticed the edges were still a bit rough, so I sanded them down one more time to get them ready for a sealer. We're not using anything too fancy to seal up our foam, we're just gonna be using a mix of Mod Podge, white paint, and a bit of water so I can achieve the consistency I like. I paint the whole base, and after a few coats, we're gonna let it dry for a while and start working on the bottom of the scale. First up is the part that actually shows you the weight. I'm basically making a clock or an open watch face, which is just a flat circle of clay at the bottom and a flat rim around the sides. Then we have to make the arrow that indicates how thick the Kirby is on the scale, and this will be attached to a spring. It's gonna be attached to a spring to show that our Kirby has overloaded the scale with his thickness. To make it, I took one of my tools and wrapped some thin wire around it, super simple, and then I poked through the center of the arrow with it and baked it so they stay attached. And while I had the wire out, I made a trapezoidal cage that will act as the skeleton for the body of the scale. This part was a bit weird to build just because it's meant to look crushed underneath Kirby's threateningly large dump truck, so I chose to use wire so I can bend it and kind of use it as a template for the clay that I'll cover it in. And, uh, yeah, looks crushed enough to me. Now it's time to give the structure some clay walls. It looks a bit soft right now, but most of the magic will come from sanding it, so it has harsh edges and indents all over. Think of when you crush a soda can, that's kind of the look I'm going for. 
And after a trip to the oven and a subsequent hangout session with my Dremel, it's looking pretty darn good. Once we add some color, I think it'll really bring out all of the dents. Last thing for the body of the scale is a little lip at the bottom, which is just a roll of clay that I sand down a bit. Now we have the body of the scale and the top part of the scale. I'm not gonna attach them just yet, but I'm going to add the connector part to the bottom of Kirby and form it on the bottom of the scale so we can glue it down when we're painting. And we finally have all of our Kirby parts. It's time for some model magic. Literally, we'll be, we'll be using Crayola model magic. I was looking up the best way to make whipped cream and this model magic is an air dry clay that looks suspiciously close to the texture of whipped cream. So I'm haphazardly covering our entire base with it, which was extremely fun. And once I had an even coverage, I'm gonna start smoothing it out with some water, which I eventually realized was slightly easier with some gloves on. And with a smooth base, I'm gonna squish down our scale, which I preemptively covered in some plastic wrap, that way it wouldn't stick. Smoothing out any last imperfections before finishing the bulk of the structure with the little whip you see when you pipe any sort of icing or cream. I mean, come on, it, it's adorable. This needs to dry for a while, so let's start painting Kirby in the meantime. Much like his anatomy, Kirby's color scheme is quite simple. I'm painting his humongous spherical form a very pretty pink, and because I sanded him so smooth, it was quite satisfying to paint. I gave him a few coats of that before painting his shoes an orangey red and giving his eyes and mouth some black. Before I got to add the rest of the detail to his eyes, he really looked like a spherical demon baby. But once it dried, I added the crescent of blue to the bottom of his eyes and the white dot highlights. Once those were on, I gave his eyes a thin coat of UV resin and started painting the scale he's sitting on. I give it a few coats of a light shimmery gray, and then I use the same Kirby pink to paint the rest of the scale parts. I'm using a glossy top coat on all of the pink scale parts to make it look a bit different in comparison to Kirby and starting on the scale display. It gets a base coat of black and the sides are painted silver and I'm ready to add the face. I attempted painting it, but I'm a mere mortal and could not get accurate lines. So I chose to print out some different sized faces that I photoshopped and just glue it on the back. Now that is much better than anything I could have hand painted, so it's time to glue on the scale arrow that's bursting out from the center. I just used some super glue and adjusted the spring until I liked the position. And with all of that stuff done, it's time to start working on the whipped cream once more. I let it dry for about a full day and it looks really good minus a few cracks that we'll be covering up. Look at that, it, it just it just looks like whipped cream. Putting my fascination with this material aside, to cover up the cracks and seal the clay, I'm gonna be using some watered down Mod Podge and some cream colored paint. Once all of that is dry, I glue all of the Kirby parts together first and then secure the scale to the base with some tacky glue. And I decided not to just glue down the face of the scale, but instead attach it via a thicker spring. Then I applied his blush and we are officially done with the base form. Now it's time to to add all the fun extras that give it that cutesy dessert character. And the first thing we're gonna do is dig out some red clay from our hoard for the first accessory, strawberries. I cut up some roughly equal sized pieces and rolled them up so they looked like strawberry halves and holes. Then I cut a toothpick in half at a 45 degree angle and began pushing it into the clay to form the indents where the seeds are. And once I had them all nice and seedy, I brought out my oil pastels to add some depth and vibrance. The colors I used were peach, fire truck red, and a darkish reddish brown to show the varying degrees of ripeness you typically find in strawberries. Using a dry brush, I lightly pressed in the powder to the unbaked clay, basically wherever I wanted. Once I was done with all of them, I hucked them in the oven to cure them, and when they were cool enough, I applied a glossy top coat to imitate that shiny wax 
sexy exterior strawberries usually have. And last but certainly not least, I'm bringing out the model magic one more time along with some baking tips to make some fake whips and meringues. To get it thin enough to be pipeable but thick enough to retain the edges, I mixed in some water off camera before I put it in the bag and made sure to keep a fan running near me so the outside hardened quickly and it didn't lose its shape. And while we let those cure, I got a nice array of colors that I'm turning into some rainbow sprinkles. I'm just rolling them thin and cutting them into relatively similar sizes before tossing them in the oven. And now it is time for the delicious assembly of our sweets. I'm adding pads of Model Magic that I'm pressing the strawberries into and blending them out with some whips, meringues, and little dots of Model Magic that I just rolled up on the spot. And once I have an array that pleases my eyes, the sprinkles are out of the oven and I use some tacky glue to attach a tasteful amount of them all over. And lastly, we need to give our Kirby the first place bow that he deserves. I'm not putting this at the end because I completely forgot he had one in the reference photo, but rather because it took me too long to realize that he's the true winner of my heart. With that all said, Let's take a final look at his gorgeously thick, voluptuous form. Oh, you little goofball, making it all the way through the video like that. But seriously, thank you for watching. If you like video game crafts, do subscribe, as I put an obscene amount of love into every video I make. Usually by now, I'd know what I'm crafting next and hint at it, but I'm tied between two ideas right now, so it'll be a complete mystery. So stick around until the next video, and I'll see you there.